Returning to our top story, the legislation to see the Voice to Parliament referendum held later this year has passed the Senate with an absolute majority. Joining me live is Independent Senator David Pocock, who was in the Senate at the time. Uh, 52 to 19, the, the Constitution Alteration Bill has passed. First of all, Senator, uh, good to talk to you again. What, what's your reaction? Afternoon, Kenny. It is historic. We're going to head to a referendum to finally recognise Australia's first peoples and enshrine a voice to Parliament in our constitution to ensure that going forward we are hearing from uh, First Nations people about issues that affect them so that we can actually begin to deal with the entrenched disadvantage we see across the country and make better use of the money that is going to, to communities. It was a packed gallery. There were passionate speeches. What was the mood like in the Senate this morning? Yeah, there, there were a lot of people in, in the galleries, people who have worked on this for decades. Uh, we heard some of the, the usual lines about this being a Canberra voice, a Labor voice. Uh, that's really disingenuous because this has been the work of, of decades, getting to this point of deep consultation to finally have a government that is willing to put this to the Australian people about whether or not we want to recognise Australia's first people, about whether we believe that they should have a say on things that affect them. And I would urge people to read the earlier set from the heart, to learn more about what this proposal actually is, because this is both symbolic, but actually deeply uh, pragmatic and practical as a way to get better outcomes for First Nations people. OK, just moving on, you're, you're voting with Labor on the Housing Australia Future Fund. Um, now, the Greens have sided with the Coalition to delay the housing bill in the Senate until a National Cabinet report on rental reform uh, is there. So that puts it back um, to October 16, I believe the date is. Mm -hmm. What happened in the Senate? Can you, can you talk us through it? Mm -hmm. Coalition and, and the Greens teamed up to essentially kick this, this bill to August. So the Senate can't deal with it before then. This has been a, a drawn-out negotiation with the government, very frustrating at times. The Greens and the crossbench have got fairly significant concessions out of them now. They've agreed to index the fund, which is over $6 billion over the next 25 years. The $500 million a year is now guaranteed. The government can actually top up the fund should they want to. The minister can disperse more than $500 million uh, if the fund... Uh, receives more. At the moment, the, the future fund has been averaging about 9%, which is $900 million a year. So whilst there is broad uh, acceptance that this is not the big answer that we need to housing, it is a start. It is proving a new model. And it's disappointing to see, to see the Greens not bank these gains and, and continue to push for things like better renters' rights. And for the coalition, really hypocritical uh, from them. They set up over $40 billion worth of future funds to do some really, really good things, uh, yet they continue to, um, I guess, take, take shots at this, this model. What do you think should happen now? Because we're, we're going to have to wait until, until October. What do you think the government should do? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> you know, talking to, talking to people here in the ACT talking to the, the peak bodies uh, who are involved in community housing, there is a recognition that this uh, is at a point where we have to get moving. And this would actually allow us to invest the money and to start investing in social and affordable housing. Uh, is it enough over the long term? No. But there, as we know, there is actually limited capacity in the, in the building sector. And so starting with this will actually give us time to, to begin to ramp that up. And you'd hope that there's more money over time. But this you know, really comes down to uh, Labor and the Greens sorting something out. I think it's the expectation of Australians that the Senate is there to keep a check on the government and to negotiate in good faith. And once legislation is, that, that's happened and legislation is there to be voted on, to either say, yes, I'm gonna vote for this or no. Uh, and yet what we're seeing is it continuing to be kicked down the road and, and no, one, no one wins. We've got 300 people a day, 300 Australians a day turning up to try and find crisis accommodation or long-term social housing that are being turned away. 
And so there is a real urgency to this. Just getting your thoughts quickly on one final matter. The Pharmacy Guild is calling on the federal government to go back to the drawing board on the 60-day prescriptions after an independent report by an economist says 20,000 jobs could be lost in the sector and more than 600 pharmacies may close as a result of the new dispensing policy. What's your view on this? It's obviously a pretty heated topic at the moment. We've been doing a lot of consultation with pharmacists, with the, with the Guild... Uh, with, with doctors talking to, to, to people here in, here in the ACT about what it, what it means for them, what their views are. You know, at, at the heart of this it is about um, the heart of this is about making medicines cheaper for people. People in our communities will pay less for medicines now. They'll be able to get two months at a time. Some of the things we've been pursuing with the government are around arrangements for, for aged care. It's very unclear exactly what that's going to look like. There are, there are a few pharmacies here in the ACT that have really invested heavily to be able to serve aged care facilities, and I want to ensure that that can continue. So I think there's, you know, there's some details to be worked out. We're continuing to consult with pharmacists, to go to the government to try and work, work out details like around aged care, like around the opiate dependence treatment uh, program, which is... You know, dealing with people in our communities that, that really do need support and we need to make sure that it is a smooth transition for them. Ultimately, I think uh, Australians will benefit when we do have, when we're paying less for, for medication. Senator, thanks so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks for having me.